I'm planning to knit a sweater using the form computer and the first thing I need to do is to knit the test swatches. So in today's video I will show you how to knit test swatches that can be used with the form computer. Before I begin knitting I will share some of the most important things that you have to keep in mind before getting to the knitting machine. The test square must be knitted with the main yarn for the project and by using the same pattern and stitch size setting as the one for the garment. If you are using a very stretchy stitch pattern it's best to make the test square twice as big then measure it later and split the results in half. This way you will ensure the garment you want to knit will be the exact size you want to make it. For counting the rows to knit you always have to refer to the row counter. No matter how many rows can be seen on the fabric you must have 40 rows on the counter so the measurements of your test piece are accurate. If the garment you want to knit has a border you have to knit another test swatch for it as well so the computer can calculate the rows to knit. According to the booklet with the form programs you can knit any sweater using a stitch pattern of your choice. I will knit a plain sweater as my first one made with the form computer so I need to knit a stockinette stitch test swatch first. Make sure the racking handle is in its lowest position. To make the test square I have to raise 40 stitches but I will raise 60 so even if the fabric curls I will be able to take the correct measurements. Don't forget that only the needles on the front bed are counted so no matter what stitch pattern you are using your test square will always be between bot numbers 20 on the needle scale. Now I will arrange the needles in a one to one division then I will move the left edge spring on the last working needle. Set the front lock to N and the stitch size to 1. Then set the back lock to GX and insert the black strippers. Move the lock to the color changer and take an eyelet with waist yarn. Now knit one row. Increase the stitch size to 4 on the front lock. Use the orange ruler and raise the rest of the needles. Then move the left edge spring to the last working one. Tap on the feet of the needles and knit one row. Clear the row counter and set the stitch size for the main stitch size for your project. Tap on the feet of the needles and knit 10 rows with the waist yarn. Don't reset the counter. I'm using stitch size 5 so I will make markings on the test piece. I will skip the first 10 needles on the left then I will slightly raise 5 needles to the right. I will use the single prong tool to transfer the stitches from the raised needles to the adjacent needles to the right. If your stitch size is not a round number after transferring the stitches for the first number skip 10 more needles and raise additional needles to mark the clicks on the dial. One raised needle means one click on the dial. Make sure the empty needles are in working position and knit 10 rows without changing the settings on the lock. Now you can reset the row counter. Then move the lock to the color changer, take the main yarn for your project and knit 10 rows with the same lock settings. Don't reset the row counter. On the front bed slightly raise the 20th needle to the left and the 20th needle to the right of the center. Drop the front bed then take a contrasting color yarn strand and manually knit both stitches. Make sure to put the yarn tails between the beds of the machine. We will use these stitches to correctly measure the test swatch in the end. Now raise the front bed and knit 20 rows without changing the settings on the lock. Don't reset the row counter. 
Now once again raise the 20th needle to the left and the 20th needle to the right of the center. Once again I will need both stitches with the strength of contrasting color yarn. Later I will measure the horizontal distance between these two stitches and the ones I made earlier and I will take the average distance to use as my test swatch size. Raise the front bed and knit 10 rows. Now you can reset the row counter. Move the lock to the color changer and take the eyelet with the waste yarn again. Don't forget to retread the machine or pull some yarn from the eyelet. Now knit 20 rows with the same lock settings. We are almost done. You can reset the row counter now. Now you can make a cast off sew of the stitches or use the trick of it to remove the test piece from the machine. You must not have any live stitches that can unravel so use your favorite method to remove the test piece. This is my test piece. As you can see there are 5 holes in the left corner which means that the sample is knitted with the stitch size set to 5. Next you can see the contrasting color stitches that mark the ends of the test piece. We have to measure the distance between those two stitches to take the stitch gauge and the whole length of the main yarn to get the row gauge. But I will make this in the next episode. I plan to use a 1 by 1 needle arrangement for the ribbing so it's time to knit the second test square. First make sure the racking handle is in its highest position. Raise 60 needles on the front bed of the machine, 30 to the left and 30 to the right side of the center. Place the edge springs on the last working needles. Now raise the opposite 60 needles on the back bed. Place the edge springs on the last working ones. Use the orange ruler and arrange the needles on both beds in a 1 to 1 division as shown in the video. Then put the edge springs on the last working needles. It should look like this. Set both locks to N and the stitch size to 3. Insert the orange strippers. Take an eyelet with waist yarn and knit one row. Set both locks to CX and increase the stitch size to 4. Now knit 2 rows. Set both locks to N and increase the stitch size to 5. Now knit 1 row to finish the cast on. Clear the row counter and set the stitch size to the main stitch size for knitting the rib on both sides of the lock. Now knit 10 rows with the waist yarn. Don't reset the row counter. The stitch size is set to 3.5 so I have to mark this on the test swatch. I will skip the first 10 needles on the left side then I will use the double eye bodkin tool to transfer 3 stitches as shown in the video. The process is the same as for making an open work roll. Make sure the empty needles are in working position. Now I will skip 10 more needles then I will transfer 2 more stitches to mark the clicks on the dial. I will show you how this will look at the end of the video. Make sure the empty needles are in working position and knit 10 rows with the waist yarn without changing the settings on the locks.
Now you can reset the row counter. Move the lock to the color changer and take the eyelet with the main yarn for the ribbing. Then cut the waist yarn and retread the machine. Knit 10 rows without changing the settings on the locks. Don't reset the row counter. Raise the 20th needle on the left side, then the needle that is opposite to the 20th needle on the right. Use contrasting color yarn strands and manually knit off those stitches. Now thread these yarn strands into the eye of the double eye bodkin tool and put the yarn tails between the pads of the machine. Do the same with the other yarn tail. These markings will help us measure the stitch gauge later. Please don't forget to support me by liking the video and leaving me a comment below. Now knit 20 rows without changing the settings on the locks. Don't reset the row counter. Now once again raise the 20th needle on the left and the needle opposite to the 20th needle on the right. Then knit off the stitches on these needles using contrasting color yarn and hide the yarn tails between the beds using the double eye bodkin tool. Now knit the last 10 rows. You can reset the row counter. Move the lock to the color changer and take the eyelet with the waist yarn. Then knit 20 rows with the same lock settings. Now we have to make a cast off and take the test swatch of the machine. I will use my favorite U70 lock to transfer the stitches to the front bed first, then I will use the Trico Fit device to make the cast off. These two gadgets will save me a lot of time. This is what the second test swatch looks like. At first I will make sure all of the contrasting color yarn strands are pulled to the back side of the piece. You can do this by simply pulling them with the latch hook. Next I will tie several knots that will keep these yarn strands in place. And finally you have to hide the rest of the yarn tails or cut them short. So this is my second test swatch. As you can see, the eyelets on the bottom are marking the stitch size. To measure the stitch gauge, use the contrasting color yarn stitches on the front side and to get the row gauge, you have to measure the whole length with the main yarn. Now stretch the test swatches lengthwise, then leave them to relax overnight. Wash them, then iron them if you plan to iron the garment and lastly, you will be able to get accurate measurements. But don't iron the ribbing. Ironing the ribbing may kill the yarn and the fabric will lose its elasticity, especially if you use acrylic yarn like me. That's all for today, have a nice day and see you in my next video.